Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to a brief devotional from God's Word. This is a devotion from the Treasury of Daily Prayer to bless you as we begin this period of Lent. Jesus, grant that balm and healing in your holy wounds I find every hour that I am feeling pains of body and of mind should some evil thought within tempt my treacherous heart to sin show the peril and from sinning keep me from its first beginning May the Lord bless your day. A Daily Lenten Devotion for Monday, Lent 1, February 22, 2021 The New Testament reading is from Mark 3, 1-19. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him, and he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And he went up on the mountain, and called to him those who he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach, and have authority to cast out demons. And he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon of Cananea and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. This ends the New Testament reading. A WRITING OF MARTIN LUTHER In order to raise up Adam after the fall, God gave him this promise when he said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. In this word of promise, Adam, together with his descendants, was carried, as it were, in God's bosom, and by faith in it he was preserved, waiting patiently for the woman who should bruise the serpent's head, as God had promised. And in that faith and expectation he died, not knowing when or who she would be. 
yet never doubting that she would come. For such a promise, being the truth of God, preserves even in hell those who believe it and wait for it. After this came another promise made to Noah, to last until the time of Abraham, when a bow was set in the clouds as a sign of the covenant, by faith in which Noah and his descendants found God gracious. After that, he promised Abraham that all nations should be blessed in his seed, and this is Abraham's bosom, into which his descendants have been received. Then to Moses and the children of Israel, especially to David, he gave the plainest promise of Christ, and thereby at last made clear what the promise to the men of old really was. And so it finally came to the most perfect promise of all, that of the New Testament, in which, with plain words, life and salvation are freely promised and actually granted to those who believe the promise. Martin Luther Let us pray. Lord Jesus, prepare us for that eternal Sabbath when you will rest in us, just as now you work in us. The rest that we shall enjoy will be yours, just as the work that we now do is your work done through us. But you, O Lord, are eternally at work and eternally at rest. It is not time that you see, or in time that you move, or in time that you rest, yet you make what we see in time. You make time itself, and the repose which comes when time ceases. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or, Luther's Evening Prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Taught by our Lord, and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lenten Catechesis The First Commandment You shall have no other gods. A god means that from which we are to expect all good, and in which, we are to take refuge in all distress. So, to have a God is nothing other than to trust and believe Him with your heart. I have often said that the confidence and faith of the heart alone makes both God and an idol. If your faith and trust is right, then your God is also true. On the other hand, 
If your trust is false and wrong, then you do not have the true God, for these two belong together, faith and God. Now I say that whatever you have set your heart on and put your trust in is truly your God. We are to trust in God alone and look to Him, and expect from Him nothing but good as from the one who gave us body, life, food, drink, nourishment, health, protection, peace, and all necessities of both temporal and eternal things. He also preserves us from misfortune, and if any evil befalls us, he delivers and rescues us. So it is God alone, as has been said well enough, from whom we receive all good, and by whom we are delivered from all evil. Even though we experience much good from other people, whatever we receive by God's command or arrangement is all received from God. For our parents, and all rulers and everyone else, with respect to his neighbors, have received from God the command that they should do us all kinds of good. So we receive these blessings not from them, but through them from God. For creatures are only the hands, channels, and means by which God gives all things. So he gives to the mother breasts and milk to offer to her child, and he gives corn and all kinds of produce from the earth for nourishment. None of these blessings could be produced by any creature itself. The Large Catechism This has been a brief Lenten devotion provided by St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Caseyville. We pray that these devotions may be a blessing to you during Lent. Every wound that pains or grieves me By your wounds, Lord, is made whole When I'm faint, your cross revives me Granting new life to my soul Yes, your comfort renders sweet Every bitter cup I meet For your all-atoning passion Has procured my soul's salvation